All right, good morning. I'm Teresa Coates. I'm the National Educator for Shannon Fabrics, and I am here today at Missouri Star Quilt Co. in Hamilton, Missouri. I'm really excited to be here, and we are going to talk about cuddle quilts. So this is National Quilting Month, and we make a whole variety of cuddle quilts that I'll be talking about today and how to put them together. Okay, so the first, what we're gonna do Make sure I'm going to talk about the right thing in the right order. This is the kit that we're going to do. We're going to do a Wee One kit. So when you get these kits, they are um, quilt as you go. We call it stitch and flip, which is basically the same thing. And I'm going to show you how to do that. So we're going to talk about these, the kits and what's in them. Okay, so when you open up the kit, let me show you the finished one. So this is what the finish looks like. Okay, this is just a little guy, and this one is actually the same, it's the same style, no matter which, what way, or the same production, um, what's the right words? It's the same way you put it together, no matter what size kit that you're doing. Okay, so you, we're going to show you how to do a small one, and the big one is done exactly the same. All right, so this is what the kit comes as. I'm going to pop this thing open for you. Okay, and on the kit, it will tell you in the back here. So it'll show you what the um, kit is, what the name of it is, how big the finish is supposed to be, and what your backing fabric is. All right, some of the quilts come with backing fabrics and some of them don't. We'll talk about that later. Um, but it also talks about the recommended notions you need, what is cuddle, which is 100% polyester microfiber <laughs> plush fabric, and then how to deal with some of the, um, the issues like the cuddle dust and um, tips for sewing. If you read the pattern, all of those tips are included and there's lots of information in there. So in each of the kits, you're gonna get a big piece of fabric that is your backing fabric. And you'll get all of the little strips that go toward making your cuddle kit. So in the pattern, it'll show you how it's gonna look and then you get a whole pattern that tells you how to put it together. Okay, so we're gonna walk through that. Okay. So I've got my backing. And then I've got my strip. So I've got two pieces of snowy owl. I've got a middle piece. And this I know is my middle piece because when I unwrap this, it is a little bit bigger. Okay, so that's kind of the thing is you're gonna need to unwrap your pieces and see what you've got. So this is a wider piece. These are smaller pieces. Oh, and I forgot to tell them if they have questions, they can put it up there and we'll feed them over to me. We have quite a few people tuning in already, and we will get questions to you as soon as we get questions from the audience. Good, so good. If anybody does have a question, please let us know in the chat, and we'll get it right over to Teresa. Yay. Okay, so we've got all of these. So these are all five-inch strips. So the, the way that the kits are put together is they will have five or ten-inch strips in addition to a center panel. So that's what these are. Okay, so I know that all of these are my strips for the quilt that will create this. All right? The thing is that you'll end up with a piece that is extra long. This is always your binding piece. So when you're doing the little guys, this is your binding piece and make sure you put it aside because it's your binding. And if you cut it, you're gonna be in trouble. Okay, <laughs> so this is the, the, uh, the hard lesson is when you accidentally cut that and we don't wanna do that. Then you get in here, you get a little cuddle basics. It talks about all about the tips about working with cuddle fabrics, including what kind of thread and needles and all that stuff. And we'll kind of go over that as well. And then you get this cute little tag to put on your quilt. Okay, so I'm gonna put these aside. And today we're gonna to work with doing binding on the quilt, I mean batting on the quilt. So the batting that I like to use is this, which is the Quilter's Dream Poly. And this is just a really thin batting and that's what I like about it is that it's super duper thin. So the reason we're gonna use a batting in it is to give it some stability. Do you have to use batting? No, and I'll show you both ways that you can use it and you don't have to use it. All right, so we'll show you the end result. So let me get this moved. Oh, and I didn't introduce Hawk. Do you want to come on in, Hawk? <laughs> oh, can I so for a minute? Sure. I, like I said, I'm the national educator for Shannon Fabrics, and every week we do a show called Sew Together Tuesday. Hi, everybody. And Hawk is the co-host with me. So he's yeah, the cameraman. I'm the camera guy. He usually stays behind the scenes, so, but I wanted you to. I, I got, we have three camera guys here, <laughs> yeah. so I, I can go hide <laughs> you can, again. You can go hide I can go again. hide again? Okay, yeah, great. Yeah, go Thanks. for it. Okay. So when we're using the batting, the reason we want, might want to use the batting is because it gives it some stability to the fabric and while you're sewing it. So if you're new to sewing with knit fabrics, this is a great place to start. Thank you. I'm going to move that over here because I am sure to knock it over. 
Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get my backing fabric. And I'm gonna lay that out. So there is, cuddle fabric is 100% polyester and it has a nap. So there's like an up and a down on it and there's a stretch. So one of the things that people always ask about is, is it really stretchy? It's not very stretchy. They depend on the fabrics, like depending on which kind of lux cuddle or cuddle fabrics, it will have different stretches. But the stretch is always going to be width wise, okay? So it'll stretch this direction, but it won't stretch this direction. Okay, so lengthwise doesn't stretch, widthwise does. And if you keep that in mind while you're working with it, it really does help. So I'm gonna lay this down. And actually I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna put the batting down first and then I'll put that. So if we weren't gonna use batting, we would start straight with that piece, but we're gonna use batting. Because I wanna show you how that works. So my patterns. So I've got a piece of batting that I cut 30 by 30 inches. And then I'm gonna lay my quilt down, or my quilt backing down, okay? This one, because it's directional, it's really easy to tell which way it goes. If it's, or it, yeah, it's because it's directional print. If it didn't have a directional print on it, I would have to pet it and be able to see which way it feels right, and it'll feel really smooth one way, and then kind of like petting a cat backwards um, the other direction, it kind of ruffles against you. And that's not what we want. We want to try to get all of our fabric going in the same direction, okay? So then I'm gonna take this back and I'm gonna fold it back halfway. So basically my uh, batting and my fabric are the same size-ish, okay? There's a lot of ish that happens when I'm working with cuddle fabrics and it's because they're just so, they're very flexible in what they do. Um, one of the things that's important to remember is just kind of keep your patience with it. So I'm gonna put this over my table so that I can spray and not spray the table. A quick question for you, Teresa. Yep. Is there a difference between cuddle and minky fabrics? Yes, but only slightly. So is there a difference between cuddle and minky? Cuddle is a minky fabric. So that's what it is. Um, cuddle is the brand name for Shannon Fabrics Cuddle, or for Shannon Fabrics Minky. Minky is just really 100% polyester microfiber plush. And uh, we just have the brand name of cuddle. So that's the biggest difference. So the thing to remember about that is that the minky that you find at other places is probably not our minky. We only sell our cuddle through independent quilt shops like Missouri Star. So you won't find it at the big chains. That's a different kind of minky that is not our minky, which is the better minky. <laughs> and from Cheryl online, uh, in regards to these cuddle kits, would you recommend these for beginners? Yes. And I would recommend starting with this small size. So the small size, sometimes people are like, oh, it's so small, I can't really use it. But what it's for is really just practicing the technique, figuring out how to make it work, and then using it to make the larger ones. Because like I said, once you've made these small ones, you know exactly how the bigger ones are made. And that's important is to get that skill set kind of down. So I would recommend starting with a small one. And I do recommend starting with the batting when you're doing the very first one, just because it will make it a little bit easier to sew. And I'll show you that when we're doing it. Okay. So the biggest thing is to make sure that this rolls out nice and flat. If it doesn't match perfectly, like I said, it's there-ish, the same size, I don't really care if they match perfectly, because the way that we're gonna put this together at the end will square it up, which works really nicely. Okay, so now my batting and my backing are just one piece, and I'm just gonna deal with them with, uh, together the whole time. All right, so I'm gonna lay this down, and one of the things that I need to do is find the center. So I'm gonna fold it in half, and then I'm gonna take my Sharpie, and I'm just gonna mark the fold on the inside and mark the fold on the inside here. So then I know where my half line is, okay? So this might seem crazy to mark on your stuff with a Sharpie fabric, but it actually works just fine and this part is gonna get cut off. So it's absolutely fine. All right, so let me grab the piece that I need. Here it is. So here is my middle fabric. So what I need to do next is figure out the middle of this. And I need to make sure 
that my fabric is gonna face the same way. So I always wanna fold it over and check it, make sure that my nap is going the same direction. In this case, I want the faces looking the same way. So I'm gonna unfold that, and I'm gonna find the center of this guy. And I'm gonna do the same thing and just mark it with a little Sharpie. And that way I'll line up these two edges. Okay, and these two are exactly the same. These are two digital print cuddles. So you'll find that I will talk about different cuddles. There's Lux Cuddle, there's Solid Cuddle, there's Digital Print Cuddle. And they all work slightly differently. So I'll show you some different techniques as we go. Okay, so now I've got my little lines lined up. They match. All right, so I'm going to fold this in half this direction. I'm going to give it a little spray. I'm going to fold it back over. So the reason we like to use the, the basting spray really is because it keeps it where I want it to be. Because it's a knit fabric, it's going to want to move. And knit fabrics are kind of known for being a little squirrely. So we want to just control it as well as we can. And for me, that means the basting spray. And I like to use the Odif, which is really uh, just a nice basting spray that doesn't stink and it doesn't uh, cause the stickiness on your needle. It doesn't stick to other things so much and it washes right out, which is great. Okay, so you see I've patted this down. Now we get to part where we can actually sew. Okay, so I'm gonna put my fabric and basting spray away. And the next part is gonna be the strip. So in the pattern, if we show the pattern, does it always have to look back to reference the pattern? So the next one is a little strip, which means we need to cut the fabric. This is what always kind of scares people is cutting the fabric. There is a reason that it's messy and it's because it has all these really soft little fibers on there that are so yummy and nice. But when we cut them, they get cut and they fly places. So I have some techniques for dealing with that. One of them is that we're gonna cut it a little bit differently. I always mark it first. So we're gonna go ahead and mark this. When the strips come in the kits, they're cut, they're supposed to be five inches is what the, what the pattern calls for is a five inch cut. But in truth, we always cut them a little bit bigger so there's some wiggle room, just in case we'd rather give you a little bit extra than a little bit too little. So they're always a little extra. And I'm gonna measure this one and see what we've got. And it's got five and three quarter. So you have an option when it's, when it's not the right size, you can make them bigger strips. You can take a bigger seam allowance or you can trim them up. Generally, I just cut the strip in half and take a bigger seam allowance, mostly because the less cuts I make, the happier I am. So <laughs> I don't make more cuts. So half of this would be almost three. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark this. So I have my Sharpie. I'm gonna measure this with my ruler and draw the line. The reason I always draw the line first is just because it's slippery. So if it moves on me and I'm cutting it, it's more of an issue than if I draw the line and it moves, I can just redraw the line. Okay, so normally when we're quilting, we wanna cut with a rotary cutter. And I'll cut with a rotary cutter later, we'll show you. Um, I don't like to cut with a rotary cutter because what it does is it cuts off all of the nap and then you just have a mess everywhere. So I have two different techniques that I use. Um, I like to use a blade or scissors. So the Karen K. Buckley's are my favorite. So these are what they have here. So they are the Karen K. Buckley's in the blue. These are the ones that I like. They're micro serrated scissors and that's really the most important part is that they're micro serrated. Um, these are nice because they just have really comfy handles and they cut very well. And this is, the, this is the right size for it. Or you can use a blade like an X-Acto knife. So I have one that's also by Olfa that has that same really sharp point that works very, very well to cut the cuddle. So and I'll cut it. Speaking of supplies, sorry yeah. to interrupt you, Teresa. No, go for it. Uh, what brand of spray are you using today? It's the OD505 spray. Yeah, so that is the one that I like the very best. It really does, it washes out, it gets off of things, it doesn't overspray too much, and it doesn't smell, as we can kind of tell from being in here. Some of the others smell a lot. So I'm gonna show you this. So when I, when I cut the cuddle, I just have a little blade. So this is, like I said, it's very much like the X-Acto knife sort of thing, the nice sharp, uh, point to it and what I do is I'm going to hold this nice and tight and then I'm going to drag this around along the line. The important part here is that you're dragging with it very close to the fabric and not up on its point. So we're dragging so that more of the flat part is on the line and I just drag it down. You don't have to push very hard and really what it does is it kind of just slits the backing 
and not so much of the front. Okay, so then we end up having some on here. So we'll have a little bit of a mess, but not too bad. Okay, so it just keeps the fibers on there. So if I were using a rotary cutter, all of this would be get off, and that's what floats around your room. Okay, I will tell you the first time that I was really using Lux Cuddle and I was making a big blanket and it needed a lot of cuts and I was just cutting with the rotary cutter and then I decided I would blow the cuddle dust off my mat. You can imagine it didn't work very well. It kind of floated around for the next three months. And <laughs> so now I learned to cut it with the scissors or with the blade. So with the scissors, I'm just gonna tuck them right underneath the backing and I'm just gonna snip right along here. And I kind of leave it off the table, which lets the nap kind of fall down and me just cut the backing of it. And I just follow that little line. So it takes a little while to do, but it's not too bad. And it's much, much less mess than with the rotary cutter. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this whole thing and then I'll show you how to put those together. So like I said, this one is cut quite a bit wider than it needs to be almost a half an inch. So I can, like I said, take a bigger one. If you wanted to cut these down, you're more than welcome to. So you can absolutely cut these down to the right size um, or be slightly lazy like me. Okay, so you can see all of, the, all of the nap that's still left on there. So I'm gonna give that a good shake, get rid of it. So generally, you'll wanna just shake it, and shake it away from there. When you're doing the large kits, and then I have a little vacuum secret tool okay <laughs> so the vacuum helps very well too but if you're doing a large kit if you're doing like the crazy eight kit what you want to do is cut all of these strips at one time throw them into the dryer with a wet washcloth for about 10 minutes let them um, tumble around no heat and it will bump off all of that cuddle dust so at the end you're just dealing with strips that are cut and clean and easy to work with that's the biggest um, issue that people generally have is that they don't get rid of that cuddle dust before they start sewing. And that's really super important that you do that. Okay, so I'm going to put this over here. Hey, Teresa, can yes. you just use a rotary cutter? Can you use a rotary cutter? Yes, you can use a rotary cutter. Do I like to? No, because it makes such a mess. Um, so some people will totally use a rotary cutter, and you can. It's quick. It's easy. It cuts off all the fuzz so you have a bigger mess. If you have the vacuum cleaner close, just vacuum the edges. It's fine. Um, I also like the softness of the edges for different applications, so I just tend to cut all of it that way. But yes, 45 millimeter rotary cutter works great. All right. So now we're going to go back to my center strip here, and we're going to sew on a strip. Now, cuddle, one of the things that people complain about is that it's stretchy. So like I said, this batting will make it so it isn't stretchy. It gives it a bunch of stability so that you're not trying to fight the, net, fight the knit of it. Um, the other thing is that when you're sewing it, it's really important not to let the stretch get away from you. So when, when we're pinning it on, we don't want to start pinning here and then pin across because what will inevitably happen is it stretches. In the kit, it's cut to the right size, basically. It's real close. So we want to just pin one end, pin the other end, and then pin in between. All right, now one of the things that's important is that we're gonna check and see which way our nap goes. I can see the nap runs this direction more, so I'm gonna turn it and flip it around. Okay, if you were to do this and sew it um, the opposite way, it's your choice. Okay, no worries. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin here. So the pins that we're using, we always use a flower head pin. So I have two of them. So these are my personal ones. These are the medium weight. And these are the ones that they have here, which are the same. Okay, it's really important to use a medium weight or a heavy weight pin. I really like the Clover brand of pins. They're very sharp and strong. And it's important to note that because they have some that are thinner. So you'll notice this is 0.55. I think it's 0.7. I think for the um, heavyweight ones, and it'll tell you the length. So you can actually look at the, the pack of pins and it'll tell you how strong they are. It'll also tell you whether it's for medium weight or lightweight fabric. Clover makes a blue one and it's for lightweight. So make sure that you're not getting that if you're working with cuddle because they'll just, they'll bend. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pin at one end and then I'm gonna pin at the other end. And I always like to pin parallel to the raw edge, which is different. And the reason that I do this is because it holds down a, like a larger hunk of it and keeps it in position a little bit better. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin the center. 
And then I just keep dividing this up and pinning in between. All right, and the reason I do this is because it won't stretch that way. If I start pinning here, you can see it will start to move. And this will happen when you're sewing it if you're not careful, but it also will totally happen when you're pinning. And we've had this happen in class lots of times where someone gets to the other end and it's like two inches too long. They're like, what happened? And that's what happened is they just needed to be pinned a little bit more judiciously and um, make sure that you're not pinning from one end to the other because it will naturally kind of stretch a little. Those are on our... Uh, widthwise, which is the stretch. So once I've got it pinned here, and I've got it pinned parallel to this edge, we do something called double pinning. You'll see this in all of our patterns that we talk about it. And if you watch Sew Together Tuesday, you'll see this is what I do all the time. As I do a second row of pinning, and what this does is it allows it to stay in place while I take that first row of pins out and doesn't allow the fabric to move. So it's a lot of extra pinning, but my theory on it, I guess, is that I would rather spend the time pinning than I would taking stitches out and trying to fight the fabric. So I just don't want, I don't want to fight it, so I just pin it a lot. And Michelle that works well. would like to know, could you use clips as well as pins? So you can, and some people do. Some people will use clips here instead. I find that the clips don't hold it as tightly as I want it to, so I double pin everything. Um, you can use clips, but what, like I said, I feel like they don't hold quite as nicely. So to each their mm. own. Yes. You, will, you will use clips when we get to the binding stage. I will. On yes. this part, I, like, I really do like to double pin on this stage of it, though, because this is sewing across the width of the fabric with the two stretches together. And if I'm doing this without batting in here, which you can, then I have three stretchy fabrics that are all trying to do their own thing. So if I can just kind of handle them with the pins, that's what I'll do. All right, so now I've got the machine set up. I've got polyester thread in here because we always want to use polyester thread with cuddle. Because it's a stretchy fabric, the polyester thread will stretch a little bit, which is super important to keep in mind because if you use a cotton thread and it stretches a little bit, it will break the thread. And we don't want to break any of these seams once we've sewn them because then we have to come back and fix them. Nobody wants to do that. I really I don't. Okay, although I will show you how to in case you need to. But, um, Okay, so we've got polyester thread, I've got a 9014 stretch needle in here, and I've got it set at a straight stitch at 3.5 millimeter. So that's important is we're always gonna make our stitch length a little bit bigger, okay? Because we want it to go through the fabric easier. And if it's a longer stitch length, it will actually work itself through a little bit faster than if it was if it's a tinier stitch. So because it's a thick fabric, that makes a big difference. The other thing I did to set up my machine was I, or I decreased the presser foot pressure. So I made it so there wasn't as much pressure coming down on the foot so that it isn't holding the fabric quite as tight and it will let the fabric kind of work itself through. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and see if I can make it sew. Okay, so I'm gonna back stitch just because I wanna be careful and make sure nothing comes out. And then I'm just gonna sew my way across here. Okay, so I always try to keep a hand back here and guide it. The other thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna watch those second, that second row of pins I've got and make sure I'm not gonna hit any because I wanna not run any, over any of those pins. But this first row, I'm just gonna take out as I'm sewing. Okay. And Debbie would like to know, uh, do you need a walking foot for this? Yes. So I've got the walking foot on there. It makes a huge difference whether you use the walking foot or not. So the walking foot helps to drag the fabric through and really will make a big, big difference in getting it to work through, especially if you have a batting. So make sure that you've installed your walking foot. Make sure you get that little arm over the needle screw. And that's right, the number one mistake there. And then use that to... Um, yeah, to help it. There is, on a lot of machines, they have something called an even feed, and that isn't the same thing, and it doesn't work quite as well, so if you have access to a walking foot, that's even better. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to get over to the other side here, and then just do a little back stitch, and then I'll show you how that worked. So leaving the pin in, so you can see I left in that whole row, that second row of pins, I just left it in, but it means that the fabric didn't move at all, 
which is super important is that you don't want that fabric coming with you. So leaving that second row of pins in for me is a great way of being able to see if it's moving or not. So if I have to start taking out those pins because it started shoving, I know something's wrong and that's when I'll fix it. And usually that entails making a bigger stitch or loosening my presser foot pressure a little bit more. Okay, so now once I've got this row sewn on, you're gonna see it's sewn through all the layers. So now it's already quilted. Doing this with uh, batting, you're gonna need to make sure that your batting doesn't need to be quilted more than every 10 inches if you're using this or you'll need to quilt this middle part. On some of the bigger quilts, we have a big chunk that's in the middle and if you use a batting, you're gonna have to quilt that because the batting will fall apart. Uh, so it isn't really, it isn't something about the fabric, it's about the batting. So always remember that and make sure you look at your batting to see what it requires. Okay. Just a note from Allison here. She says, Teresa, mm -hmm. you have made my cuddle sewing experience so much easier. Uh, the only downfall is now everyone in her family wants a cuddle backing. <laughs> darn it, darn it. Just the worst problem. Hate it when that happens. <laughs> I have the same problem, except that I just really want the cuddle backing on everything. Everything. Okay, so now what I'm doing, so I put this little piece of fabric under here. You can use a piece of parchment paper, you can use scrap paper, whatever you want that you don't mind getting sprayed on. At home, I have a big sheet that I use and then parchment paper because the, the spray will just wash out, which is great. Um, so we're gonna put this on here so we don't really get the overspray and I'm gonna kind of tuck this over so I don't get it on the mat. And I'm gonna spray the back of this strip. So every time we're gonna pin it, sew it, and then spray it. Okay, and the reason we're gonna do that is because it holds it in place. If you don't spray baste it after each time that you sew it, what happens is it kind of humps because it won't lay down flat. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna push that up and smash it out, okay, and not let it stretch because the stretch would be this way. So I'm gonna push straight up so that it just lays nice and flat. All right, and then I'm gonna sew on the next strip. So you can do it two different ways. You could sew on this strip here, or you can sew on the next strip here, all right? I like to do it kind of back and forth, so I'm gonna go ahead and sew on the other one, and then I'm gonna show you how to take some stitches out, okay? So, because this is important. Well, I'll have to do it at some point. So, I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna purposely mess this up for you guys. So normally, I would want the nap to go this way, and the nap's gonna go that way, but I'm gonna switch it around because this happens sometimes when we're sewing and we get things put in the wrong order. They, yeah, the block gets put in upside down. The strips get put upside down. I have a yeah. question from Kathy. Uh, she says, it looks like you were pulling as you sew. Is that correct? I keep tension on it. So I'm not pulling so much as keeping tension on it. The thing is that you want it to help kind of guide it through the machine. I found that if I don't keep a hand on the back of it, it's really hard to get it to go in a straight line. So if I keep that hand on the back, then I can kind of guide it, which works well for me. The key, the key really is not to pull it, but to just keep some tension. So yes, good eye, good eye. Yeah, it just depends on the, depends on the fabric, but it really does make a difference to not, to not just kind of try to let it guide itself through. And speaking of sewing, is there a specific type of needle that you're using today? Yes, it's a 9014 stretch needle. And that's important because it's a knit fabric. So a stretch needle will it has a sort of rounded end to it. So it's not as sharp as say a Microtex, which will just pierce right through everything, which is great and exactly what we need in some situations. But with the cuddle, we need it so that it'll kind of slide through the fibers and not um, cut through them like a Microtex would. So that the, the Stretch needle will sort of slide between, and what it does is creates a better stitch. If you try to use a universal needle or a Microtex needle with cuddle or with any knits in general, it will end up skipping stitches. So using that stretch needle is important. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew this one again. And again, I'm gonna stick this under here. On most machines, they have this fancy little lever that goes up higher. If you haven't found yours yet, look for it. It is probably one of the things that most people are surprised at in classes when I show them that their little machine will do that and they had no idea that it will actually do that. So if we do this and I show you, if I just try to push the fabric through here, I really don't have a ton of control. So if I keep a hand back here, I can guide it straight through and keep that, um, that seem a little bit straighter. Because it's a knit fabric, it wants to kind of do funny things. 
And part of it is really letting go of your need for perfection with these because they're always going to be soft. And that's the, that's the goal, in my opinion. And again, I, I lengthened my stitch to a three and a half. So we always say in our patterns to a three or a three and a half. If you are having uh, issues with it not going through, that's really the thing to up first is up that, that stitch length because a two or a two and a half won't feed this through at all. Okay, so now pretend that I just realized I sewed it upside down because that has definitely happened to me where I have sewn the whole thing, I've been very excited about it, and then I realize, oh my gosh, it's upside down. In a situation like this, it's really, it's not the end of the world. I can't really tell. If I look at it, top and bottom don't look that different. It's not a big deal. But in some certain situations, it would be a big deal. And if you're, you know, finicky about that stuff and you want it to be fixed, this is the way to do it. So most people want to grab a seam ripper. And that's kind of the worst idea with the cuddle because, or with knits in general, just because it's hard to find those stitches in there. So that blade comes in handy, so we cut with it, but we can also go ahead and cut the seam with it. So I just go ahead in here, and I pop these stitches, and I can just pull it off. Okay, so I'm not even looking at where the stitches are really. All I'm trying to do is cut the thread, and I can go ahead and cut it off super easy. Okay, so don't use a seam ripper with it. Um, that will be... That's a game, game changer and not in a good way. All right, so let me show you the back of it really quick here. So you can see because it has, um, because it's a print, you can't see the lines super well, but you can see them a little bit. I actually have the dark gray thread in the back. So I use the thread, it's kind of a medium gray, I guess. A medium gray thread I use in almost everything because it really does hide because it sinks into the nap so nicely. And then it's just kind of gone, which is great. So we would just keep continuing with this I'm going to show you, I've got one a little bit further along here, where I've gone ahead and I continued all the way up. But this one, let me show you before I get rid of this one, let me show you the difference in the drape. So like I said, you could use batting or not use batting, and it really does make a difference mostly in how it feels when you're sewing it because you're sewing three stretchy things together or it can feel a little bit different because of the drape that is actually in the fabric. So when we use the batting, the batting gives it a lot of shape, right? But when we don't use the batting, there's really no shape to it kind of at all. It just drapey. So it depends on what you want in the end, what look you want, what feel you want. That's a good thing to decide at the beginning. Do I want it to have some body or do I want it to be really drapey, okay? I would suggest that on the larger ones, if you're going to use batting, that you really take your time because the batting will definitely um, take some time to get on there on the big, the big quilts. And I tend to do those without batting ever. Uh, okay. Marianne would like to know, what thread are you using today? It is a polyester. It's the Missouri Star one. Missouri the polyester Star. specifically? Polyester specifically. Yep, polyester quilting thread from Missouri Star is what I'm using. Um, yes, you want to make sure that it's always polyester because polyester stretches. And polyester is also the type of fabric it is. So it's good to keep your, the types together. So cotton with cotton and poly with poly. I think the good note there is that if you used cotton thread to sew minky, it would sew fine. Mm -hmm. But if you ever stress the blanket, you pop stitches, so right. it might leave your it might leave your quilt shop or your your sewing studio looking great intact. Yeah, but you're going to end up having to repair it. Exactly, and especially on something like this where I've sewn it just the knit knits together, there's nothing to hold that so that it doesn't stretch. It will stretch, and when I, after I get this done, we'll show you because um, yeah, it is a it is a very good point that the cotton will break. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to I'm going to spray base this down. So this is the last snowy owl one. Now, when I get to this point, one of the things that happens is I only have a little bit left here and it's not perfectly straight. And this is sort of one of those places that people get a little bit um, panicked about that, oh my gosh, it doesn't fit. It's totally fine. We're going to make it fit just fine. So we're going to stick this down. One, we didn't talk about it, but there's always a half an inch seam allowance. Almost always almost always with cuddle. So you have a half an inch that this is going to work down. We can also move it, adjust it, 
and it actually just cut off the end if we want to. All right, so I'm going to get this on as straight as possible. One of the things that I like to do is I will use my ruler and kind of give it a little uh, look-see here where I can see down that this seam is two inches and I will line up the bottom of this fabric so that it's even across here. And that way my seam will be even in the end. It's kind of a cheater method. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to pin here. I'm going to pin here. And I'm just going to stitch a little bit of this. What time is it? How are we doing? Oh, we're at 11.36. Oh, great. You have 20 minutes. Oh, we're doing fine. Because so I want to show you guys the binding. So this is one thing that always kind of kerfuffles people. So this method, too, we're using the cuddle strip quilt today. So it has the, cut, the cuts already in there that they coordinate. They look great together. You can do this with fabric that you choose as well. So you can get yardage and just get um, quarter yard cuts or half yard cuts, a variety of different, and put them together in the same way. You can also do this with cotton on the front and cuddle on the back. So you can absolutely do, um, I've seen people do jelly roll quilts and using the cuddle on the back. This same method of just quilts as you go. Now this is from Laura. If you're using cuddle on the back of a cotton pieced front, do you still need the stretch needle and longer stitch length? Um, generally speaking, yes, I'd still use it. Yes. So um, I would still use the stretch needle for sure. And the longer stitch length would kind of depend on how it was working. So if I was sewing it and it wasn't sewing very well, I would lengthen the stitch. And if it was sewing fine at two and a half, I would keep it there. So really that's kind of a, yeah, up to you. And it really does depend on the machine. Machines vary dramatically on how, um, how they sew it. So yeah, it would kind of depend. But do make sure that you check your presser foot pressure as well. If you have the ability to change that, you wanna add it, like make it so that it's lighter and doesn't press on your fabric as much and then it will flow through your machine much better. So even lower end machines will work with it just fine. Almost got a caught. All right, so now once we've got this done, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna finish this seam and then we're gonna spray base this last seam and then we'll trim it up and that'll be it. So basically at this point, the quilt is done except for trimming and binding. So you can see it's a really quick, easy put together. These little quilts will take you a couple of hours and the larger quilts, I did my first big crazy eight, which is a 68 by 72, 58 by 72. And I made that one in two evenings after work. So they're very easy blankets to put together pretty quickly uh, if you want a big, nice big quilt. Got a question for you from our live audience over here. Alrighty. I'm Pam Cornwall and I'm from Pullman, Washington. And my question is probably kind of dumb, but um, when you're doing the pinning and mm -hmm. you talk about the two double pinning, yep. it, is the second one like opposite? Like, so you do one. It's kind of like a zigzag. Like, okay. So okay. that's the way they do So they all go the same direction, but okay. they kind of come in like this. Oh, okay. Does that okay. make sense? That makes sense. Yeah, because yes. what I'm trying to do is hold down that whole area. So that's what I'm really trying to do is hold everything nice and flat while I'm sewing. So that's the purpose of that kind of zigzag. If you put them exactly parallel, then you still have gaps in here that can move. So it really is just a matter of trying to control the fabric. Okay, so I've got all of my strips on. Okay, I have seen people finish this, just surge the edge and they're like, I'm done, I'm out. <laughs> but really, I think it's because people are afraid of the binding and the binding is not hard. Okay, so let's go ahead and square this up. I generally square this from the back because I can see my stitching lines better. So one of the tricks with um, the smaller ones, most of them come with a print cuddle, which is pretty lightweight. So it's easy enough to, um, to cut and to deal with and it's easier to get through your machines. If you use a luxe cuddle, you won't be able to see any of your stitching lines at all. So, you know, there's pros and cons. Um, but this, the prints that come in the, the kits are always kind of made to hide the, 
imperfections as well. So what I'm doing is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to find a line, just a random measurement on my ruler. I'm going to line it up with one of my seam lines here. I'm going to line it up with a seam line here and get it as square as I can and then cut it. Okay, and I am going to use the rotary cutter, so we'll have to use a little vacuum. So I'm going to make a little bit of a mess. Okay, and if it doesn't, if your kit doesn't work out to be perfectly even, I mean, with this one, I have to, I do have to trim it up and get everything to match. It's totally fine. One of the things that I really love about Cuddle is that it is just so forgiving. So if it isn't perfect, it doesn't matter. It's still soft. Hawk and I always joke, is it soft? <laughs> if it's soft, <laughs> like, it's fine. People will be like, but it's not perfect. I'm like, is it soft? Yes, okay, we're good then. That's all we're, that's all we're asking for, is let's let it be a little soft. Okay, so I'm trying to double up in getting that square down there and having this the same width all along. Okay, so you can see the, you can probably see the mess that I'm making with the rotary cutter is a lot more than I made with the blades. So I just try to like kind of tackle the mess as I make it. I don't like it to pile up because it's, it's just not as much fun to clean up when there's a lot of it. So also on these, these backings, you're gonna find that they're, sometimes they're selvage. And we're just gonna go ahead and cut that right off. Okay, and I'm not gonna, not gonna worry about it at all. It also tells you to measure it to 27 by 27 inches. And you can see that I have done no measuring whatsoever because I just don't believe in it. I just want it to be square-ish. It's fine. It's close enough. Baby's not going to care. And this one certainly is just, you know, practice. Okay, so one more little edge. And you can see I'm just not, I'm not going to pick it up. I'm not going to move things around too much. I just kind of let it be. And the more I do that, the easier it is to deal with. Okay, so this end, I'm going to try to get the same width on this end strip as I did on that first on the other side so that they look the same. One of the things that I have found is that if you don't keep those the same, you will notice it. So weirdly, if one end is a half an inch longer, you'll totally notice. If it's a quarter an inch, a lot of times you'll still notice. Um, so I'm just going to try to get this to basically match and see if I can get it square on the corner. The good thing about cuddle quilts is they're nice and soft, but you're also never really going to enter them into a quilt competition. So quilt police do not exist in cuddle quilts, which is fabulous. So, you know, you just do what you will. It's fine. All right, I'm going to give it a good shake. I will say that if you're shaking this at home, make sure you vacuum up quickly because it will get slickery on the floor. All right, so now I've got my little quilt. I was gonna show you the difference, and I don't know if you guys can see it very well, but the difference on the back with the knit when you're sewing knit to knit is you can see your seam allowance more and it does like wrinkle a little bit more, okay? So when I have it with the batting inside, it will stay nice and straight and is a little bit nicer finish. So like I said, again, there's not a right or wrong, there's just a, these work differently, which is all good. All right, so now I've got my batting strips. So quilting or um, doing the binding with cuddle is really simple or similar to cotton binding, but just enough different that if you don't know the tricks, you're kind of in trouble. So one of the biggest things is that we only do one layer and we do a raw edge. So we're gonna sew it to the seam allowance, flip it over and raw edge it down. This is partly why I like using that blade because I keep a nice soft edge to it. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna sew two of my strips together. This fabric is fairly easy to tell which direction it is going. If I look at it. Okay. She says, yep. so glad I came across this live, very helpful. I've wanted to make a quilt like this for my grandson, but I just wasn't sure how to go about it. Now I can confidently give it a try. Thank you, great tutorial. Yay, good, <laughs> that's what we want. And honestly, cuddle isn't difficult to deal with, it just is a little bit different. And if you don't know some of these things, it 
makes it intimidating enough to not try. Um, there's been lots of classes that I have taught that people have told me that they have bought the kits and then they have left them in the closet. They pull them out periodically, pet them, put them back. <laughs> like, just think about making it. They're afraid to. And uh, we're kind of hoping that maybe we can show people how to do it and they'll see how easy it is and start making those, those kits and then, you know, get some more. Okay, so I just sewed this together just like you would for a cotton binding with the, um, the two edges together. Flip it, does it work? Yes, okay, cool. Then I will cut that off. And I'm just gonna whack that off. At about a half an inch seam allowance, a little bit less. You don't wanna make it too tiny. Um, quarter inches are tends to be a little bit too small for it, um, just because it curls uh, because it's a knit fabric. So we wanna keep it a little bit longer. Now I've got a long strip. If you cut this to 27 by 27 inches, two strips will get you all the way around because they're 60 inches wide. If you do like I did where you just kind of square it up, you might need a little extra more. Um, so you have enough to have three strips, but technically if you did it right, I can tell by looking at mine because really I'm supposed to cut off like three inches on the side. Mine is not square. I don't really care. It's fine, it's fine, right? Okay, like I said, no quilt police. Nobody is gonna challenge me on this one. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I've cut my strips. I did them before at home with the blade. So you can see all of the edges still on there. Okay, so you've lots of nap hanging off the side. I could see this side has more nap hanging off, which means this is the bottom side. Okay, so I'm going to do it so that that comes around to the front is what I'm going to do. And I've sewn them together at one and three quarter inches is what they're cut at. That's really, really important. So I'll say it again. It's one and three quarter inches. All right. So it's a little bit different measurement. You can do it a little bit more, one and seven eighths, two inches. Um, but really one and three quarter is my ideal. And it's what we include in the pattern. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to, I'm going to pin this down in place because I don't want to lose this. And then I'm going to give myself a good hand width here, and that's going to be my tail as I come back around. And then I'm going to stick a pin in where I want to start sewing. And then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to use one of my favorite little notions, which are these jumbo clips from Clover. And if you've not used these, they are awesome. Um, they are so big that they just kind of hold down all of the fabric. And I love that. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to clip these in here. And I use the flat part up top and I hold these in place. So this is when Hawk was mentioning that sometimes I use clips. This would be it, okay? And that's because they just have tended to work a little bit better in this situation. Teresa, yes? Why you Of course I would put it there, of course. Okay, all right. So you can all see now? Okay, good. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna put this in where my pin is, my, the second pin I put in. I'm gonna take it out so I don't sew on it. And I'm gonna go ahead and do a little back stitch. And I'm doing the same straight stitch here and I'm gonna st stitch right down the side here and I'm just gonna take my clips out as I go. If you're doing this and you notice it starts to push a little bit, slow down, um, use, uh, use the stiletto, which is what I'll do to kind of guide it. And I use the By Annie stiletto and just kind of guide it underneath here and get it to go. You can kind of push the fabric underneath. So this sort of thing where you kind of hold it down and push it underneath the foot just a little bit to keep it flat. Don't let it, don't let it get away from you. So keep an eye on it, make sure it's not pushing forward. It shouldn't be. Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick a pin in here at about a half an inch from the end because I wanna stop there. So that's my little visual clue. And walking feet generally are about a half an inch wide. So that's why I haven't had to really care too much about the seam. And generally, ish is fine. <laughs> so it's about a half an inch. Okay, I'm just gonna pivot, sew off the corner, cut my thread. So now I've got it, so I've sewn, I've sewn down here and then off the corner. All right, so then I'm gonna go ahead and take this. I'm gonna fold it up and I'm gonna fold it back down just like we would for a quilting cotton binding. Yeah. 
wants Good. to know, are there more tutorials with you out there, and where can she find them? <laughs> there are a bunch of tutorials. So yes, we've been, uh, we've been doing Sew Together Tuesday tutorials for the last three years. We're entering our fourth, and we've got how many, 160-ish? 160 160-ish 160 160 yes. episodes of um, the, the show, which is actually just a... Um, a tutorial basically every week where I do different projects and you can find that on YouTube under uh, Shannon Fabrics and then also we're live every week starting next week on the Shannon Fabrics YouTube and Facebook where we'll do a new tutorial every week. And we might have some tutorials coming soon as well maybe, maybe about is, a month from now. True. Might That's see what true. Jenny's doing seeing if we could uh Maybe get a few more tutorials with her as well. See if I can convince her to sew on some cuddle again. I just made it. Shouldn't be hard. She's done, she's done some before, I know. We'll be back. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to stitch down. The important thing to note here is that I pinned this out of the way. And then I started stitching at the corner and stitching down. So sometimes people get confused and restitch here. Do not. Just stitch down the next side. Okay, and I'm just going to stitch down here a little bit. And then I'll show you how we're going to finish that binding off. Okay. One, I could sew fast because I've sewn this a lot, but I would say one of the things to make sure that you remember is that you can sew slowly and it's fine. Okay. It will sew better if you do. We do have a lot of questions coming in about using flannel as an alternative to quilt batting. Is that a possibility? Yes, absolutely. You can use flannel. You can use cotton. Um, you can use lots of things, nothing. Flannel absolutely works. The only thing that I recommend with that is if you want to use flannel in it is make sure that you pre-wash your flannel because flannel is always made out of cotton and it's very shrinky. So it will uh, shrink on your cuddle, but your cuddle won't. So that can be a problem. So yeah, make sure that you're just washing that first. Absolutely. So on this part here, I'm going to go ahead I'm going to unpin that. I tend to work and not, not talk through it sometimes. So this is my stitching line that I can see here. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to bring the raw edge over just past that stitching line, and then I'm just going to clip it in position. I'm going to do that same thing over to the edge. Now you can stitch it and then keep stitching down. I find that I have much better luck if I stitch this, I take it out, I clip the next side, I stitch again. So that's the way we're going to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and reset my machine. So we want to do, we're going to just do the raw edge on this. So we're going to go ahead and put a zigzag stitch and I'm going to change it to a, uh, as big as this machine will let me, which we're going to see what that is. Come on. It'll let me do a five, that's great. Okay, so I'm gonna do a five wide, five long zigzag is what I'm doing. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stick this underneath the foot and what I want is that zigzag to come down just on the raw edge and then on the binding. Okay, so I'm kinda of gonna watch it the first little bit and see where it's landing, make sure it's landing where I want it to be. It is, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put my uh, wonder clip out of the way a little and I'm just going to kind of keep an eye on where my edge is by looking at it underneath because all that fur, <laughs> that big fluff that's up there, I can't really see my edge. So I always call it, call it blind sewing, but I really am just going to grab the edge, stick it where I want it to be and kind of get my way through. And like I said, I'm going to come to the end here and I'm just going to stop at the end, clip my thread, do a little back stitch clip my thread. Okay, do our back and clip that and then start down the next side. So what I found is that I have a really hard time turning that. So for me, even with practice, it hasn't gotten necessarily easier. I'm going to go ahead and do a miter just like I would if it were cotton binding, bring it over. And if I need it to stay really specifically in a place, I'll use a pin, but otherwise I use the clips. I'm going to go ahead and stick that underneath there. The nice thing about cuddle is because it is so fluffy, really pretty much anything you do will hide in the fluff. And I'll show you just a second here hey, what Teresa, I mean. Five yes. minute warning. Oh, thank you. Okay. All right. So I would do this all the way around and then just combine the ends, obviously, first before you do this top stitching. But I just wanted to show you this basic 
overview. So now even if you look at it here, you can't see the stitching that I just did right on top. You can't see the raw edge. And I can go in here, if you get in here close, you can see it, but I can come in and I can fluff all these seams or the uh, fibers right up out of the zigzag. And it just hides all of those zigzags. So for anybody who's worried that maybe the zigzags would show, this is a medium gray thread on brown fabric. You still can't see it. It's fabulous. It's really one of the, the perks about Cuddle is it will hide pretty much anything. So that is the basics on how you make it. If you want to add your little, uh, your tag, let me see if they added it on this one. This is where you would add it is before you sew your binding on, make sure you sew your little tag into the edge, okay? This is the way this one will turn out. Pretty cute, all right? Super duper easy. Let me go over really quick. Is it okay if I tell them about these kits? Can, okay. can we see the back and see oh. what, the, what the seams look like on the back of that quilt? Uh, this is the one that close up the one that's finished yeah so this yeah. is the finished one right this was a question from all the way back at the beginning of the show but now is mm -hmm. the time to talk about it so so this is that's the one that um someone else did for me and this is the one that i did and this is without batting in it okay so can we see that all right yep okay mm -hmm. then let me show you this one real quick because this is the one with the batting in it and they do look different so i think that that's that's helpful to know is that your end result will vary um, depending on what you're, what you're using. All right, so the kits come in a whole bunch of different varieties and so we brought some in just so I could show you guys. Um, so these are what we call a wee one which is the size that I did and I think that that's the helpful size to start with because it's small, it's easy and if you mess it up it's no big deal. Give it to a little kid. Let your pet love it. It's practice, that's what it's for, okay? It's just to learn how to do the process. Once you've got it down, we do some bigger sizes. These are Bambinos. These finish at 28 by 32. The thing to remember is that on the back, I don't know, let me know if you guys have problems seeing it, but on the back it'll tell you the fabric that is included in the backing. So it says backing included and shows you a little picture. If you are doing one of the larger quilts, it'll tell you the backing suggestions and it'll give you color suggestions. So that's different, that means there's no backing included and you're gonna need to get some. Whatever it tells you, get a little bit more. I think it tells you a yard and a quarter for the, or yard and an eighth, yard and an eighth. I would get a yard and a quarter, a yard and a half. Now when you have some flexibility, it doesn't have to match perfectly. We don't wanna deal with any sort of ideas of perfection with this. This really is just about making it lovely and soft. So make sure that you look at the back of it. You can get a fabric to go on the back. We have two that would coordinate. So like this one is a C3, we call it, a cuddle three. So this is a flat cuddle. This will show the lines very well. This is perfect for long arming because it will show everything, which is great, but you definitely want to practice a little bit because um, it'll it won't hide as many of your you're not so straight lines. Um, <laughs> I won't say mistakes because they're just not as straight, that's all. Or you can use something like this, which is a Lux Cuddle, which goes very well with this Woodland kit. This one works really well and does hide more of your stitches. So I always kind of um, go back and forth on what I want and what I want to use. You can get the two yard cuts pre-cut or you can buy yardage, whatever you want. But every single kit, if they don't have, if they don't have backing in it, they will tell you color suggestions. So then you can just kind of go and pick out the ones that you like. Um, they're really super easy. They'll also tell you what size it should end up as. As you saw, I don't measure anything because it doesn't matter. <laughs> you just make the quilt. It'll be soft and lovely. Um, there's lots and lots of things that you can make with cuddle fabric. This is just the easiest way of um, getting started with it, right? Okay, anything else you want me to tell them? I think that's it for us. Thank you so right. much for joining us here today, Teresa. Very, very welcome. So make sure that you, yeah, we'll be doing more tutorials with Jenny, and we'll be back live with Sew Together Tuesday next Tuesday. March 14th is our, um, our comeback after our hiatus. We've been out for three months, so I'm pretty excited about that one. I hope to see you guys there. Thank you so much for joining me. Make sure you check out the selection and uh, enjoy the cuddle.